In this video, we'll see about atherosclerosis. We are going to look into definition, risk factors, pathogenesis, morphology, complications and consequences of atherosclerosis. So let's start with the definition. Atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis, it is a progressive disease of the intima involving large and medium arteries characterized by focal lipid-rich intimal lesions called as atheromas. So it involves large and medium sized arteries and it involves generally the intimal layer which is the innermost layer of the blood vessel. In the intima there will be lipid rich lesions will be seen which are focal. Focal means they are patchy, they are not uniformly distributed. Now we will see the risk factors of atherosclerosis. So in risk factors it includes modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors. Modifiable risk factors, there are four modifiable risk factors. It includes hyperlipidemia, hypertension, cigarette smoking and diabetes mellitus. In hyperlipidemia, uh, as we know, the LDL cholesterol, it is known as the bad cholesterol and increases the risk of atherosclerosis. The HDL cholesterol is known as good cholesterol. It decreases the risk of atherosclerosis. The normal cholesterol levels are uh, 140 to 200, uh, 240 mg per deciliter. Now, now we'll see about hypertension. Hypertension increases the risk of atherosclerosis. Uh, cigarette smoking. If uh, cigarette smoking is present, the atherosclerosis will be more severe and extensive. Diabetes mellitus also increases the risk of uh, myocardial infarction in atherosclerosis. Now we'll look at the non-modifiable risk factors. It includes genetic abnormalities, family history, age and gender. Genetic abnormalities. Uh, it includes familial hypercholesterolemia. Family history, it is mostly multifactorial. Uh, it may be due to genetic, environmental or lifestyle changes. Age, increase in age increases the risk of atherosclerosis. Gender, uh, men have increased risk of atherosclerosis when compared to premenopausal women. Menopausal women generally have the same risk as those of men. The decreased risk in premenopausal women is mainly because of the effect of estrogen. So the main risk factors are modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. In modifiable, we have seen about hyperlipidemia, hypertension, cigarette smoking and diabetes mellitus. In non-modifiable, we have seen about genetic abnormalities, family history, age and gender. We will now see about the additional risk factors. Inflammation, C-reactive protein levels, hyperhomocysteinemia, which is an autosomal inborn error, metabolic syndrome, LPA levels, increased procoagulant levels, inadequate physical activity, stressful lifestyle, type A personality, obesity and alcohol, all these include the additional risk factors for atherosclerosis. Pathogenesis. So the pathogenesis here is according to response to injury hypothesis. So uh, as you can see here, this is the normal blood vessel which consists of tunica intima, media and adventitia. The, uh, we know that this lipid rich focal lesions will be seen in tunica intima. This tunica intima is lined here by endothelium. This is tunica media where these are the smooth muscle cells seen and this is the tunica adventitia. So first what happens, uh, first there will be chronic endothelial injury. So why does this chronic endothelial injury occur? Because of this risk, risk factors such as hyperlipidemia, diabetes, hypertension, smoking etc. All other risk factors which we have seen. Due to all these risk factors, there will be chronic endothelial injury. So because of this endothelial injury and also this endothelial injury can uh, be because of hemodynamic disturbances. Normally, the blood flow is laminar and non-turbulent. So the laminar flow means the blood flows in uh, layers. And the flow is uh, in, of a constant speed, so it is not turbulent. But when there are hemodynamic disturbances, the blood flow becomes non-laminar and turbulent. So because of this hemodynamic disturbances also, chronic injury can occur. So these are two factors which can lead to chronic endothelial injury. So what happens because of in, uh, this injury is that 
due to this injury uh, as we know when there is an injury both wbcs and platelets would be attracted to the site of injury so this leukocytes including monocytes and t lymphocytes will uh, will adhere to this endothelial uh, to this uh, tunica intimal layer so these are here as we can see these are the monocytes and uh, uh, and um, t lymphocytes because of this uh, there will be increased vascular permeability and also platelet uh, adhesion and thrombosis will be seen uh, as this injury there will be platelet attraction and adhesion, adhesion and uh, thrombosis also the accumulation of LDL uh, so one of the risk factors is increase in LDL uh, as we have seen uh, this increase in LDL will lead to LDL accumulation at the site of injury so here we can see this LDL accumulation at the site of injury so there is a uh, leukocyte adhesion and, uh, my, and uh, aggregation, a platelet adhesion and also LDL accumulation at the site of injury. So what happens after this adhesion is that there will be migration of this monocytes and the lymphocytes into the intima. Because of, uh, as we have seen here, the vascular permeability will increase. Because of this increased vascular permeability, the monocytes and T lymphocytes will enter into the tunica intima. And also there will be lipid accumulation in the intima because the lipid also enters the tunica intima. So as you can see this is the intimal layer here the monocytes and LDL is seen. Also macrophages and monocytes which will enter into the intima will release cytokines, chemokines, free radicals and growth factors which will further lead to uh, chronic endothelial injury. And then after this lipid accumulation, there will be oxidation of these lipids. Uh, we have seen that free radicals are generated by macrophages and monocytes. So these free radicals will oxidize the lipids and there will be oxidation of lipids which is uh, generally LDL to oxidized LDLs by these free radicals. After the oxidation, uh, this LDL will be engulfed by the macrophages and T lymphocytes to form a type of cells which are known as foam cells. So in this diagram, we can see this. Uh, these are the macrophages and T lymphocytes which have engulfed this oxidized lipids. So these are known as foam cells. Now there will be migration of uh, these smooth muscle cells which are present in the tunica media generally into the intima. So the smooth muscle cells here the foam cells are already formed and the smooth muscles in the tunica media will also move into the tunica intima and these will also engulf the oxidized LDL and these will also form cells which are called as foam cells. So there will be migration of smooth muscle cells into the intima and proliferation of smooth muscle cells in the intima and also there will be production of extracellular matrix which is collagen. And these smooth muscle cells will also engulf the oxidized LDL to form foam cells. Only the extra event here is production of extracellular matrix which is collagen. And after uh, this step there will be formation of complete uh, atherosclerotic plaque. So this is only the complete atherosclerotic plaque. The microscopy of this uh, is given here. So it will consist of a fibrotic cap and necrotic center. This fibrotic cap is generally formed by the extracellular matrix and this necrotic center is formed by many cells such as foam cells, macrophages, cholesterol clefts, necrotic material etc which we will further discuss later in the microscopy. Now we will see the morphology of atherosclerotic plaque. So uh, first there will be formation of a precursor lesion and then there will be formation of a, con uh, a definite atherosclerotic plaque. So the uh, precursor lesion here is fatty streak. The gross of fatty streak, the gross morphology will be uh, first small flat yellow lesions will be seen in the intima. So as we know this uh, atherosclerotic plaque is formed in the intima. There will be small flat yellow lesions in the intima and these small lesions will combine a coelis to form long streaks which will be about 1 cm long. And what will be seen under the microscope of these fatty streaks is that lipid filled foamy macrophages will be seen. So if foam cells also seen in atherosclerotic plaque, it will also be seen in the fat, uh, foam, uh, fatty streak. The foam cells, foamy macrophages will be seen in the intimal layer in microscopy. Now we will see the formation of definite atherosclerotic plaque. So uh, this is the morphology of atherosclerotic uh, plaque. Uh, the common sites of this atherosclerotic plaque include lower abdominal iota, the next common site is coronary arteries and the next common site is popliteal arteries and then internal carotid arteries and then circle of villus. The most common site here is lower abdominal iota so this is an important MCQ and should be remembered. 
uh, in gross we see uh, the color of this flake will be white to yellow those fatty streaks were yellow in color which will coalesce to form larger sticks but here there will be a white to yellow and the size will be 0.3 to 1.5 centimeter in diameter in advanced cases it can also become 8 to 12 centimeter in diameter the shape of this flake will be irregular with well defined border so in gross we can see in the blood vessel in the intimal layer there will be a white to yellow irregular well defined border flakes will be seen in the intimal layer the distribution will be patchy or focal it will be distributed not be uniformly distributed it will be distributed in some areas of the blood vessel so the distribution is known as patchy composition uh, it is it can it will consist of soft yellow groomous core of lipid and fibrous cap so composition we know it is fibrous cap and core of lipid necrotic core or lipid core uh, this is the gross now in microscopy in microscopy we see the fibrous cap necrotic core and shoulder cells the first we will see what all uh, components are present cells extracellular matrix and lipids so cells cells will be macrophages t cells smooth muscle cells all these uh, cells will be seen in the intimal layer extracellular matrix which uh, forms the fibrous cap it consists of collagen and proteoglycans lipids will may be both intracellular and extracellular lipids will be seen now we'll see the components of the uh, microscopy so it consists of fibrous cap fibrous cap is made of extracellular matrix which includes collagen and proteoglycans and then we'll see the necrotic core this necrotic core is formed of lipids the foam cells and these lipids are only known as uh, foam cells will be present and also lipids will be present this lipids will be deposited in cleft like uh, needle shapes like cleft spaces it will be uh, present in the uh, tunic in the um, necrotic core or uh, lipid core so in this picture we can see this is the cholesterol clefts of the lipids this is the normal lipids so uh, lipids will get into the macrophages and smooth muscle cells to form foam cells also the lipids will be present normally in the intimal layer by forming cholesterol clefts and then uh, necrotic debris is also seen other structures such as thrombus organized thrombus fibrin and plasma plasma proteins are also seen uh, this thrombus is present because of uh, platelet activation and shoulder cells shoulder cells are generally present beneath and side to the cap is on a shoulder so if this is the fibrous cap beneath and side to the cap these uh, here there will be shoulder cells so in shoulder cells there will be uh, cells most commonly all the cells will be seen such as t cells smooth muscle cells and macrophages all this will be seen mostly in the shoulder region so there are three regions fibrous cap necrotic core and shoulder regions in the microscopy now we'll look at the complications of atherosclerosis uh, so first complication is rupture ulceration and erosion so this uh, when this atherosclerotic plaques are present they can uh, they can um, rupture or they can ulcerate or they can erode so the non laminar and turbulent flow of the blood can lead to this rupture ulceration or erosion or they can be hemorrhage into the plaque when the fibrous cap which is the outermost layer when, when it ruptures there will be blood flow uh, so when this uh, fibrous cap ruptures the blood will flow into the uh, plaque so there can be hemorrhage into the plaque when there is rupture of fibrous cap and uh, then there will be a thrombosis and embolism when there is a formation of ulcer or uh, one of the complication uh, or erosion or rupture any one of this when it happens it will expose the subendothelial collagen when the subendothelial collagen is exposed there will be platelet attraction adhesion migration and uh, all the steps of normal physiology and there will be formation of a normal thrombus so the thrombus will be formed and it increases in size uh, progressively which can lead to ischemia due to partial or complete obstruction of the vessel or these uh, the thrombus formed it can fragment and it can uh, deposit in some other organs such as brain leading to stroke or heart leading to mi or any other uh, organ leading to formation of a thromboemboli and then atheroembolism the rupture of plaque can lead to a formation of atheromatous debris will be present in the blood stream aneurysm so when this plaque formation is there uh, the plaque formation will be seen in tunica intima so the underlying tunica media will be generally compressed because of this plaque formation when the underlying media is compressed there will be weakening of the wall the blood vessel wall due to damage to the tissue so this will lead to aneurysm and uh, the uh, the uh, aneurysm can also rupture further 
and then another complication is calcification is it is generally dystrophic and is seen mainly in the central necrotic area other complications include stroke peripheral vascular disease these complications are uh, complications of formation of thromboemboli last topic for today is consequences of atherosclerosis so the atherosclerosis can either lead to stenosis of the vessel stenosis means the narrowing of the vessel or it can undergo a change which is known as acute plague change so in stenosis the size of the lumen of the vessel will be reduced if the lumen size is reduced more than 70 percent then it is known as critical stenosis and in this stage there will be chest pain on exertion if there is more than 90 percent of block uh, it will lead to chest pain during rest also it can cause sudden cardiac death or chronic ischemic heart disease because of the obstruction of the blood vessel. And the next uh, consequence is acute plague change. This acute plague change is known as sudden change which occurs in atheromatous plague. And this change uh, may be uh, ulceration, rupture, thrombosis, uh, hemorrhage or other complications. And this acute plague change, it is generally seen in vulnerable plagues. So plagues may be stable plagues or unstable plagues, also known as vulnerable plagues. So stable plagues, uh, the stable plagues will have thick fibrous cap, more smooth muscle cells, less foam cells and lipids and less inflammatory cells. Whereas the vulnerable plague will have thin fibrous cap, large necrotic core with large number of foam cells few smooth muscle cells and more inflammatory cells so we know if the fibrous cap is thick it will be very difficult to rupture it so it is known as stable plague plague but if the if the cap is very thin it can easily be ruptured so it is vulnerable plague uh, that's it for today thank you